Hey guys, time for a new video. Um, I've been playing around with RetroPie uh, on the Raspberry Pis and I've um, come across this case, uh, a Nest Pi case, Retro Flag for all of us it says. It's a, um, a standard uh, original Nintendo style case for your Raspberry Pi and they're quite neat actually. This one, um, I've seen a few different designs that you can buy and this one is actually, to me, looks the best and it actually uh, is quite well made. Uh, this is the box, of course. Um, it's not actually the uh, unit as it may seem, it's just been printed to look like the box that's inside, which is slightly smaller than this uh, cardboard box. It's made by uh, Retroflag. Uh, they, their URL is www.retroflag.com. Um, compatible with Raspberry Pi 3, 2 and B+. So it's compatible with the uh, standard size Raspberry Pis, not the Raspberry Pi 0. I mean, I sh I'm sure you could hack that in there, but the uh, ports and that probably won't line up anyway. So um, yeah, it's mainly designed for the standard sized uh, Raspberry Pis. So let's pull this thing open and um, see what it looks like inside. So I've already had this open, I've got it all set up, I've just put it back in for the uh, point of this video. But this is what you will see. Instruction book here telling you where to put stuff, uh, what to plug in, and um, also where to put the screws, because it comes with screws. And it also comes with a little screwdriver in a baggie. Just a cheap single-use style screwdriver, like what you get when you're um, replacing a screen on your phone or whatever. And then here is the case. And it's actually quite well made. I really do like it. So it's got Nest Pi case, retro flag for all of us on the front there. Um, they will, wouldn't have put Nintendo because uh, that will be a copyright infringement. Um, but apparently you can use a, a melamine sponge to rub that uh, ink off. And then you can put a sticker or something on there that says Nintendo and you know, entertainment system and stuff on there if you wanted to. Uh, the black here is a sticker and uh, we've got the vent on top which is actually a vent. Um, we'll come to that in a sec, there's a, a detail with that. Then we've got the two USB ports on the front which is where the uh, controllers used to go on the original system and this is connected up so you can plug in the USB uh, Nintendo or Super Nintendo or whatever controllers. If we flip up the uh, cartridge slot you can see there's two more because it's got a four port USB hub so you can plug in extra controllers for four player games or um, USB Wi-Fi or whatever, a keyboard or something, whatever you want to plug into there. And of course uh, we've got our network connection as well. Power and reset. Reset is a momentary and the power is an on and off just like the original system. And I've done a change which I'll, I'll run through. But as standard if you buy this and make no changes, the power it turns on and off without any shutdown system or shutdown uh, mechanism for the Raspberry Pi. So you've got to make sure you set the Raspberry Pi to shut down first and then turn the power off. You've got to do that manually because um, otherwise you can corrupt your SD card which is sticking out the side there. And then the reset is just, it just opens the, uh, the power circuit so that when you press that, it just drops power to the Raspberry Pi straight away and it's just the same as pressing the power on and off but it's just, you press it once and it does the same job. Um, at the back we've got uh, power input USB, the uh, micro USB, and we've got HDMI out and the um, uh, the jack here for audio out. Um, usually if you're using the HDMI, you have that audio out there anyway, but they got the provision for both. Underneath, we got some vents, which is nice, and we got this little thing here, which if we open it up, it is micro SD storage. So you can put some spare micro SD cards in there and um, keep them safe, so you can uh, run a few different images or whatever you want to do there. And then screw holes, rubber feet, all that sort of good stuff. And it looks actually quite smart. I really do like the design. Now if we open it up, you'll see that I've already got all my stuff installed. Now it doesn't come with a fan. Um, you need to put your own fan in there. That's a, a, a 30 millimeter fan. I think it might say here somewhere, does it? Uh, no, it doesn't. But it is a, a 30 millimeter fan which clips in. And also, um, you got some holes for screw holes and stuff, so if you want to screw it in as well. I just got this one because it's got a, a small internal motor, so we've got more space for the blades. See how it works, I'm not sure yet, but that's what these vents at the top here are for. So you can suck the air through those vents and then blow it directly down onto your chip. So if you, I'm going to put a heat sink on this, uh, the CPU here on the Raspberry Pi, and the fan is located almost directly above it, so it's perfectly located to keep that nice and cool. One thing I would like to see though is to see these gaps here a little bit bigger, maybe um, cut out a bit more so you get a bit more airflow, just so it's a bit less restrictive and a bit less noisy 
because if you restrict these fans, often they get a little bit noisy. But um, I'm going to change the plug on mine because it's a, the wrong size, but that then plugs onto a header just here. So that will mean whenever the, uh, the power is turned on the front, power is applied to the fan and it starts cooling your system. So that, uh, that will work quite well. Now you can see the internal design here. I've got a Raspberry Pi 3 set up and uh, in the uh, uh, RJ45 jack for the uh, Ethernet, that comes around and just comes straight to this one. So it's just like a extension cable sort of thing. So it comes to the front panel. Um, for gigabit, that probably isn't quite good enough, but we're not running gigabit, only 100 megabit, so it'll be fine for that s small distance without the twisted pair. I don't think there'll be a problem there at all. And the USB also, we've got this extension that comes around, and then we've got the uh, USB chip here. That's the your four-port USB hub chip, and then that's expanding to these two, and then these two down here, which is on its own little circuit board for the different levels. Um, I'll pull out this board, and I'll show you what's underneath. It's just two screws. Now I've modified the board underneath, which we'll run through in a second. But you will see the board here. This is just the switchboard, and it has the uh, LED as well on there for the uh, front panel. It's from here it provides a power out to the uh, Raspberry Pi, which is through this cable to this plug, and it tells you in the in the manual how to put that plug on, and it's feeding the uh, power into the GPIO. So that's one small drawback is that. It's not feeding the power in through the uh, power regulation, so you're not having a, um, the voltage protection. But it does give you the um, power switches at the front, so make sure you're using a good power supply. Um, th there is a slight cutout here that isn't cut through, just for space for the uh, USB, for the uh, power. So you could cut a hole there if you wanted to, but I don't really see a need for that. I don't think it's going to be much of a problem, as long as you have a good quality power supply. Now the modifications I've done, you can see here there's some extra wires um, around the place. Underneath here, I've stuck a little Mouseberry circuits uh, shutdown, soft shutdown circuit board. Um, I'll draw up a diagram to show you how I've connected that, but basically what that's doing is it's interfacing between the power switches and the power supply and the Raspberry Pi, so that when I press, when I turn this on, I press a power button, it turns on like normal. If I press that off, it doesn't just drop power like it would with a standard system. The Mouseberry circuit takes over and it will um, soft shut down the Raspberry Pi, then turn off the power. The reset button just works as normal. So that's uh, connected through to the Mouseberry circuit as well. And if I hit reset, it just drops power straight away in case you know, we, we have a system crash or something. So that actually, it all works really, really well. So if you're going to set this up uh, with a RetroPi and you buy the Mouseberry circuits circuit board, uh, you just follow the uh, the instructions there. Follow the instructions for Raspbian on his website, and um, it works. It does work perfectly. I've just tested it about ten minutes ago. So how do we hook this all up? Well, I'll get my whiteboard out, and I'll draw a diagram, and uh, hopefully, it'll be clear as mud. All right, this is basically what I've got in the uh, in my box. This uh, whole mess here which I've taken apart. I'll show you some close-ups in a sec. And uh, this is the whole setup. So we've got our Raspberry Pi with a GPIO. Um, we've got the USB in, which is this little board here. This is included with the uh, the enclosure. That's where we plug our power in. Uh, we've got the Mouseberry circuit here, and that is sitting down here. I've just double-sided taped that down. A um, little bit of spare space there. We've got our switchboard. That's got the uh, reset and the uh, power switch and the uh, power distribution. That is this board here, which is included with the unit again. And then, obviously, the Raspberry Pi, which is dangling over here. So, what we do is um, we've got a wire from the USB. As standard, this USB goes straight to the switchboard. We've got to take it off of there and go through the Mouseberry uh, circuit. Um, what I did is I, I actually replaced these wires uh, with thicker wires from an ATX uh computer power supply because they are thicker and I had them laying around it was free so I thought ah may as well upgrade the wires make sure we get less uh, voltage drop just in case don't have to do that but I just had the wires so I did uh, that wires into the Mouseberry circuit and you can see we've got positive and negative that's actually marked on the um, the USB board I don't know if you can see that's gonna focus positive and negative so it's pretty easy to um, to figure out red and black and that goes to the uh, the relevant points on the Mouseberry circuit. 
So you can see this black square that indicates the um, the USB plug that's on the uh, Mouseberry circuit. I try to mount that over here, but it wouldn't fit, so that's why I've got this extension just so things fit properly. Uh, we want the red one to go on the top right with the uh, USB port at the top, and the black to the uh, middle left. That's going to give us our power in. After there, we want to use uh, some more red and black wire from the uh, the bottom two terminals. When you buy this, it may come with a USB plug or a uh, like a terminal block. I bought it with a terminal block because it's easy to desolder this. It's only two pins. Um, this will get in the way if you try and use it. So I desoldered that and I put the wires in, in the, where those two pins would normally go. That way it's a lot more slimline and more compact. We've got our red and black. The black is on the right, red is on the left, and it's actually marked on the circuit board on the back of the Mouseberry circuit, uh, which is positive and negative. And that comes around into the switchboard on the, uh, the right-hand side. And you see there's positive, negative, positive, negative all the way along. And uh, the negative, you want that to go on the second from the top, and then the positive on the third from the top. I'll bring that a bit closer so you can have a look. You can see there, the uh, red and black, the thick ones. So before you solder that, though, we've got all the, some other modifications to do. I'll just run through the connections, and then we'll um, put it together. All right, so we've got the power coming from a USB to the Mouseberry circuit to the switchboard. And then, obviously, I'm just using the standard uh, connector here, which then connects onto the Raspberry Pi, as um, it says in the instructions, just here. So that's that stays the same. Now, all these other wires, we've got to run the, um, the power and the reset switch buttons, or switches, wires over to the Mouseberry circuit. So the uh, the top right two, we got one where the positive comes in and the one below it, they come over to the left switch. You can see I've put on the uh, the top two terminals here because that's the uh, normally uh, normally open I think, I believe, yeah. And if you put on the, the bottom two, it's uh, normally closed. And then you got the right and the left, they're just two separate contacts. So you can switch two things at once. It's like a double throw, double pole switch. And then on the left hand, the top and the bottom, where you put the negative and then the one above it here, they come around to the right hand switch for the reset. The LED is a third connector on the left hand side of the mouse, mouseberry circuit, and that comes around to the uh, connection here. Now, it's got to go to the left side of where the uh, LED is. And that, that way, um, the, this mouseberry circuit will control the LED, so the LED comes on and off with the, um, with the power status of the, uh, the system. Okay, so we've got to cut a few traces on the switchboard as well. Now, don't cut any on the top. You can see what I've writ written here in blue. These ones, in this pattern, on the top of this board, coming along the top, and then just over here, don't cut them, otherwise you'll mess it all up. On the other side, however, we've got to cut a few traces. So, just here, I don't know if you can see that there, there's a tiny little resistor. You want to either desolder that resistor or cut the trace. I just cut the trace, and that will stop um, back feeding through to the LED so that the, uh, the positive side of the LED is driven from our mouseberry circuit and not from the uh, power here. Because normally that just comes on whenever this switch is turned on, but we don't want that. Also, you can see there's two fat traces in between the switches there, and then there's two fat traces coming out of the switches here. Uh, you want to cut those traces, those two in there, and those two are there. I desoldered these and then cut them underneath the switch, because it was a lot easier after I desoldered them to then cut them and then solder these back in. I found it easier that way, but if you've got like a Dremel or a, um, some sort of rotary tool, you can probably just get in there with a bit and just vuk, vuk, and... Uh, Cut those traces. That way, these won't affect what's happening out here at all. You've got to be sure that you put the uh, these wires in the correct place. If you put the positive up the top here, you won't get anything because you'll be on the input side before the switch. You cut the traces and go on anywhere. The ground is connected straight through on this side, and then you've got to put the positive on the output side of this circuit board, which is where I've got it right there. And last but not least, we've got our 
blue and white wires here and that's the control from the mouse battery circuit which goes to the GPIO pins uh, GPIO uh, I can't remember 23 and 24 I think it is which is pins basically the 8th and 9th down from the end just there make sure you get those ro white, the right way around uh, if they're the wrong way around it just won't work swap them around and um, it should come to life if you've got everything else configured correctly so that's basically um, all we need to do plug it all back together and um, it should work so I'll give you a close up of there so you can see uh, this orange one where it's coming from in the mouseberry circuit and that comes up for our LED and you've got the purple and the blue for the reset um, the reset is blue and the power is purple so you can pause that there and uh, have a bit of a look so there's no other modifications required nothing required for the uh, USB Ethernet card you don't need to change anything there, you don't need to change anything on here um, and that's pretty much all you need to do once you wide up like that like that it should just work now there is one more thing you got to do once you got Ras uh, Raspbian working uh, or Ra uh, Retro Pi or whatever go to the, the Mouseberry Pi um, or Mouseberry circuit sorry Mouseberry circuit website and uh, they got a little config thing you got to type in on the command line and it will just download a script to the Raspberry Pi and that will en enable the um, the circuit to work and in uh, in Retro Pi that script works perfectly so when I turn it on press the button it turns on when I press the button again it shuts down correctly and then uh, turns off so I'll put this back together I'll get a screen on the board um, on the table here and then uh, I'll demonstrate that how it works Okay, so I've got the uh, the lights turned off, so it's a bit easy to see the LCD screen. This is an old uh, panel from a laptop. I'm using an LVDS kind of HDMI input adapter board from eBay here. Old panel, so it's a bit dim, um, but I use it just for testing. So let's see how this thing works. So if I press the power button, light comes on, and the Pi boots, just like that. So that's doing its thing. We'll let it boot up. give it a sec this is one of the optional uh, like loading screens you can choose I thought it looked cool so I chose that one you get a whole heap of skins for this uh, RetroPie as well it does you know, do different uh, features and different looks to the thing alright and we're in now let's say we want to end our gaming session so we're going to turn the thing off don't have to do any shutdown here all we've got to do is press the button boom LED goes off, it's shutting down safely, give it a sec and we're done. Look at that, works perfectly. Awesome, no corrupted SD cards, no problems with uh, pulling the power out or turning it off. You know, your kids might forget, to, to, or your nephews or your whoever you give it to might forget that you have to actually shut it down and like a normal console, just press the power button, this lets you do that. So I'm going to give that a thumbs up, give myself a thumbs up for <laughs> making this thing. But yeah, for sure, the uh, Mouseberry circuit definitely works really well it's the second one I've bought um, no uh, affiliations here just uh, plug in a good product the case as well I'll give it a thumbs up if they could incorporate something like the Mouseberry circuit inbuilt to this box it will make it just perfect but then again eh, I don't mind sending a few dollars to the uh, original innovator of that that Mouseberry circuit system but um, yeah the other little thing is a few bit bigger vents on the top there for that fan but apart from that this is actually a, a nicely made product the plastic feels good it's not swirly and translucent like cheap plastics it's nicely molded nice and square and uh, quite quite a pleasing little box so anyway I'm gonna go and uh, play some retro games I'll uh, see you guys later don't forget keep watching the videos check out the patreon and we'll see you next time